Welcome to this summary of Real Happy Pill, Power Up Your Brain by Moving Your Body by Anders Hansen, the Swedish psychiatrist and author. This fascinating book explores the profound impact that physical exercise can have on our brains and cognitive abilities. As an expert who has studied the brain extensively, Hansen packages the latest neuroscience research into an accessible and practical guide for powering up our most important organ. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, I thought exercise was just for building muscles, losing weight and improving cardiovascular health. Why are we talking about the brain? Well, as it turns out, our brains reap some of the most significant benefits from getting our bodies moving on a regular basis. Exercise is truly a happy pill for the mind. Hansen opens the book by marvelling at what an incredible organ the brain is. Weighing just three pounds and the size of two clenched fists, the brain contains around 100 billion neurons, about the same number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. It's the most complex structure we know of in the universe. Everything we experience, all our habits, personality, memories and knowledge resides in this one amazing organ that consumes less energy than a light bulb. As Hansen writes, if the brain doesn't fascinate a person, it's hard to imagine what could. But here's the really intriguing part that Hansen focuses on in the book. Regular exercise can actually improve how this incredible brain of ours functions. That's right. When you're working out your body, you're also giving your brain a boost as well. This is a relatively new area of research, but the evidence is mounting that physical activity, which we've long known is great for the body, is a powerful tonic for the mind too. Of course, this goes against the conventional wisdom that cognitive activities are the best way to keep the brain sharp. We've been told that to have a fit brain, we need to engage in mind-bending puzzles, memorization drills, brain training games, and the like. But while mental stimulation is certainly beneficial, Hansen explains that good old-fashioned physical exercise, walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, provides wide-ranging brain benefits that thinking exercises alone cannot replicate. According to Hansen, the top five brain-boosting benefits of exercise are 1. Improving our ability to handle stress. 2. Sharpening attention and focus. 3. Elevating and protecting mood. 4. Enhancing learning and memory. 5. Boosting creativity and imagination. Over the course of the book, Hansen unpacks the neurological mechanisms behind each of these benefits, citing studies and research to build his case. He intersperses the science with engaging anecdotes, expert interviews, and real-world examples to keep things lively and relatable. By the end, the conclusion is clear. If you want a happier, more resilient, laser-focused, quick-thinking and creative brain, regular exercise is the real, smart pill you've been looking for all along. Forget all those hyped-up supplements and brain-training products, lace up your sneakers instead, and get that body moving. Do it consistently, and your brain will thank you now and for decades to come as you age. Let's dive into the first major brain benefit of exercise that Hansen explores in the book, improving our ability to handle stress. To understand how this works, we need to take a look at what exactly is happening in the brain when we experience stress. It all comes down to a hormone called cortisol, you may have heard of cortisol referred to as the stress hormone. When we perceive a threat or stressor, the brain signals the adrenal glands located on top of the kidneys to release cortisol into the bloodstream. Cortisol then initiates a cascade of physiological changes, accelerated heart rate, increased blood pressure, etc. This is the classic 
fight-or-flight response that prepares the body for action. In the right amount and at the right time, cortisol is helpful. It focuses attention, delivers energy to muscles, and helps us respond effectively to legitimate threats. But here's the problem. Many of the stresses we face in modern life – work demands, financial pressures, relationship difficulties, etc. – aren't the kind of immediate physical dangers cortisol was designed for. They tend to be ongoing, even chronic. When stressors are always present, cortisol levels can remain elevated for long stretches of time, and that spells trouble for the brain. You see, the hippocampus, the part of the brain critical for learning and memory, is rich in cortisol receptors. Too much exposure to cortisol actually causes the hippocampus to shrink and even kills brain cells in this region. Even more concerning, excess cortisol also seems to put the amygdala, the brain's fear center, into overdrive. The amygdala becomes hyper-reactive interpreting even mild annoyances as dire threats. Chronic stress makes us see danger everywhere. At the same time, communication between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex, the rational decision-making part of the brain, starts to break down. We become less able to logically talk ourselves down from stress and anxiety. It's a vicious cycle. This sounds like bad news, but here's where exercise comes to the rescue. Ample research shows that physical activity is one of the most potent stress busters available. Regularly working up a sweat seems to change how the brain deals with stress, especially over the long term. For one, exercise increases the brain's capacity to generate new neurons, particularly in the hippocampus. It stimulates the production of a protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, which is like a fertilizer for brain cells. With more brain cells to spare, the hippocampus has a better shot at standing up to the corrosive effects of cortisol. Think of physical activity as strength training for this part of the brain, building up its stress resilience. At the same time, Aerobic exercise also seems to forge stronger connections between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. The rational brain and emotional brain start communicating better, making it easier to keep fear responses regulated and in check. The amygdala becomes less reactive over time in those who regularly exercise. The stress-busting benefits of physical activity likely also have to do with the cocktail of neurotransmitters and hormones it releases. Things like endorphins, serotonin, dopamine, and endocannabinoids. These positive brain chemicals seem to work together to lift mood, relax the nervous system, and provide an overall feeling of well-being, the perfect antidote to stress. It's pretty amazing to think that something as simple as regularly moving our bodies can reshape the brain's architecture in ways that allow us to be more emotionally resilient. But that's exactly what the research is showing. Of all the brain upgrades discussed in the book, becoming a better stress handler may be the most universally relevant and impactful in our busy modern world. Next up, Let's look at how exercise can sharpen our focus and attention. Many of us struggle with concentration, especially in this age of constant digital distraction. But once again, physical activity offers a powerful tool for training the brain to resist the siren call of pings and notifications. To understand how this works, we need to take a quick look at the neurotransmitter dopamine. Dopamine is often simplistically described as the pleasure chemical, but its role in the brain is much more nuanced than that. Dopamine is really more about motivation, drive and focus. It's what allows us to take interest in things and sustain effort toward goals. Here's the really intriguing part. Exercise causes a spike in dopamine. 
Activities that get the heart thumping seem to rev up the brain's dopamine-producing machinery. This likely goes back to our hunter-gatherer days, when bursts of physical activity, chasing down prey or running from predators, needed to be rewarded to keep our ancestors doing them. From the brain's evolutionary perspective, movement equals survival. But something fascinating happens when we exercise regularly. The brain actually becomes more sensitive to dopamine. Like building up a tolerance, it takes less and less dopamine to achieve the same motivational effects over time in fit individuals. The dopamine receptors in their brains literally increase in number and efficiency. As a result, those who exercise often tend to be more goal-oriented, persistent, and capable of delayed gratification. This dopamine sensitizing effect might be why studies are finding that kids who engage in regular physical activity demonstrate better focus, memory, self-control, and academic performance. The same goes for adults. Workplaces that promote exercise breaks and walking meetings report higher productivity and creativity amongst employees. Getting the body moving seems to put the brain's motivational centers in high gear. Exercise also optimizes another aspect of attention, the ability to shift focus quickly without losing awareness. When we're out for a run or bike ride, the brain has to constantly monitor our surroundings, scanning for obstacles, adjusting to terrain variations, tracking moving objects. This type of dynamic focus carries over off the jogging path too. Research shows that seniors who regularly exercise are better able to notice and quickly react to changes in their environment, potentially reducing the risk of falls or accidents. Still not convinced? Consider this landmark study. In 2007, German researchers rounded up a group of volunteers and had them memorize a string of nonsense syllables. Immediately after, half the group exercised on a stationary bike for 30 minutes, while the other half stayed sedentary. When tested a few hours later, those who had exercised were significantly better at recalling the gibberish. But the benefits didn't stop there. The researchers brought everyone back in the next day, without exercising, and tested them again. Remarkably, the cycling group still showed superior retention. The focused effects of their 30-minute workout lingered a full 24 hours later. This is the power of exercise to strengthen the brain's attention span and memory capacity. Hansen sums it up nicely. Regular physical activity is like giving your brain a software upgrade, one that allows you to maintain laser-like focus, resist distractions, and absorb information more easily. It's a secret weapon for excelling in school, at work, and in hobbies that require mental endurance. The more you move, the more focused you become. In addition to making us more resilient to stress and sharpening our focus, Hansen explains that exercise is also a powerful mood booster and antidepressant. Given how prevalent depression and anxiety have become in modern society, this is a benefit we should all pay attention to. Once again, neurotransmitters are key here, particularly serotonin and norepinephrine. These brain chemicals play an important role in regulating mood, with low levels often linked to depression and anxiety. Many of the most common antidepressant medications, SSRIs like Prozac, work by increasing the availability of serotonin in the brain. But guess what also naturally stimulates the production of serotonin and norepinephrine? You guessed it, exercise. When we get our heart rate up, the brain floods with these feel-good substances, providing an immediate emotional lift. You've probably experienced this yourself, that euphoric runner's high after a satisfying workout. Even better, 
Regular exercise seems to keep serotonin and norepinephrine boosted over the long term as well. Studies have found that active individuals exhibit higher resting levels of these crucial neurotransmitters compared to their sedentary counterparts. It's like they have a built-in buffer against the blues. Exercise also increases the brain's production of endorphins, another class of mood-enhancing brain chemicals. Endorphins are the body's natural painkillers, but they also generate feelings of well-being and even euphoria. The word endorphin literally means self-produced morphine. Again, if you've ever found yourself smiling after a great gym session despite your aching muscles, you can probably thank endorphins for that post-workout bliss. But perhaps most exciting of all, a rapidly growing body of research suggests that exercise can be as effective as antidepressants for treating mild to moderate depression. A 2011 meta-analysis looking at over 50 studies concluded that, on average, exercise has a large and significant antidepressant effect. And a more recent 2016 meta-analysis found that exercise is an effective treatment for depression across all age groups. So if you're struggling with the black dog of depression, consider exercise as a natural remedy. Even just 30 minutes of moderate activity three to five times a week can make a substantial difference in symptoms, according to the research. Of course, for more severe depression, exercise is best done in conjunction with therapy and or medication under professional supervision. How does working up a sweat alleviate the blues exactly? In addition to all those positive brain chemicals we discussed, exercise seems to help depression sufferers break out of negative thought patterns. The focus required to complete a workout leaves less mental room for rumination and worry. Logging a training session also provides a sense of mastery and accomplishment, a powerful counter to the low self-esteem that often accompanies depression. What's more, group or social exercise, things like fitness classes, running clubs, team sports, provides the added mood boost of human connection and camaraderie. Relationships are important pillars of mental health and emotional resilience. Bonding with others through shared activity can go a long way in lifting depressive symptoms. The science is clear. If you want to maintain a balanced, positive mood, regular physical activity needs to be part of your mental health routine. Forget pricey pills or trendy supplements. Good old-fashioned sweat is the original happy drug. And unlike pharmaceuticals, the only side effect of exercise is better health. We've arrived at what is arguably the most exciting brain benefit of exercise, its ability to enhance learning and memory. This is the finding that really catapulted exercise neuroscience into the spotlight. If you're a student cramming for exams, an employee looking to get ahead, or an older adult concerned about age-related cognitive decline, pay close attention. At the center of learning and memory is an important brain structure called the hippocampus. You can think of the hippocampus as the brain's save button. Its job is to process incoming information and encode it into long-term memory. The hippocampus is also crucial for spatial navigation. It helps build mental maps of our surroundings so we can find our way around. As we age, the hippocampus is one of the first brain regions to deteriorate, which is why memory loss and disorientation are common in the elderly. But here's the incredible news. Exercise can actually cause the hippocampus to grow in size. Normally, the hippocampus shrinks by about 1% each year after the age of 40, but several MRI studies have found that middle-aged and older adults who exercise regularly show significant increases in hippocampal volume compared to their sedentary peers. One study even found a 2% increase in hippocampal size after just one year of regular walking, 
That's like reversing age-related shrinkage by one to two decades. So what's going on here? Exercise seems to stimulate the birth of new neurons, a process called neurogenesis, in the hippocampus. For a long time, scientists thought we were born with all the brain cells we'd ever have. But we now know the brain can generate new neurons throughout life, particularly in the hippocampus. Exercise is one of the most potent triggers for this process. It bathes the brain in growth factors like BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor that fertilize these freshly minted brain cells and help them survive. At the same time, physical activity strengthens the connections between existing neurons, making the entire hippocampal circuit more efficient and robust. It's like upgrading your brain's RAM and hard drive at the same time. With a bigger, faster, stronger hippocampus, your ability to process, store and retrieve information gets a major boost. This has real-world implications for academic and professional success. Kids who exercise regularly get better grades, possibly because their hippocampus is primed to absorb information like a sponge. One study found that students who ran for 30 minutes before class improved their performance on a memory test compared to their sedentary counterparts. Exercise prepares the brain for learning. The same effect seems to hold true for adults as well. Employees who use the company gym at lunch or bike to work show better concentration, faster information processing and improved memory compared to their desk-bound colleagues. And in the elderly, staying physically active can stave off hippocampal deterioration, preserving memory and slowing cognitive decline. It's never too late to grow your hippocampus. So if you want to keep your memory sharp and your learning abilities optimized, Hansen recommends making exercise a non-negotiable part of your routine. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate aerobic activity most days of the week. Your hippocampus and your report card or annual review will thank you. Of course, we can't forget the other incredible memory booster that exercise provides, better sleep. When we sleep, the hippocampus shifts into overdrive, consolidating the day's events and new information into long-term memory. Exercise is a proven way to fall asleep faster, sleep more soundly and wake feeling more refreshed. All of which means more effective memory consolidation. It's a win-win. A quick word of caution, while any exercise is better than none for boosting memory and learning, not all workouts are created equal. Research suggests that aerobic exercise, the kind that gets your heart and lungs pumping, provides more brain benefits than strength training alone. Things like running, swimming, cycling, dancing and brisk walking seem to be best for bulking up your hippocampus. That said, resistance training has its own set of brain benefits, which we'll touch on in a bit. So ideally, your exercise routine should include a mix of both cardio and weights. The key is to find activities you enjoy and will stick with over the long haul. Consistency is more important than perfect exercise selection when it comes to keeping your brain sharp. So next time you have a big presentation or exam coming up, instead of pulling an all-nighter fueled by coffee and cramming, try going for a jog or bike ride instead. Your hippocampus will soak up that information like a sponge and lock it in for the long term. Keep your body moving and your mind will follow. Last but not least, let's explore how exercise boosts creativity. If you're someone who works in a creative field or just enjoys pursuits like art, music or writing in your leisure time, you'll want to lace up those sneakers regularly. The research is clear. Physically active people consistently outperform their sedentary counterparts on tests of creative thinking. One study found that individuals who exercised regularly came up with more original solutions to problems and were better able to think outside the box. Another study had participants take a creativity test 
before and after a 30-minute stint on a stationary bike, lo and behold, their scores improved by a whopping 60% after breaking a sweat. So what's the link between moving your muscles and creative brain power? Once again, it comes down to some pretty amazing changes that occur in the brain during and after exercise. For one, physical activity stimulates blood flow to the brain, ensuring it receives ample oxygen and nutrients to function at its best. The areas that seem to benefit most are the prefrontal cortex and the default mode network, both crucial for creative thinking. The prefrontal cortex is involved in flexible, abstract thinking, and the default mode network is active when we're letting our minds wander rather than focusing on a specific task. Exercise seems to prime these creative hotspots. At the same time, getting your heart rate up also triggers the release of a cascade of positive brain chemicals like dopamine, serotonin and endorphins. These neurochemicals elevate mood, induce relaxation and take the edge off of any performance anxiety, all of which puts the brain in an optimal state for creative work. It's like having your own private pharmacy in your head without the scary side effects. Exercise also seems to quiet certain regions of the brain, particularly the prefrontal cortex. You might be thinking, wait, didn't we just say exercise activates this area? It does initially, but after about 20 minutes of sustained physical activity, the prefrontal cortex actually starts to go a bit quiet. This makes sense if you think about it. The prefrontal cortex is in charge of higher order logical thinking. It's the rational analytical part of your brain. But sometimes that incessant mental chatter can actually get in the way of creative insights. By turning down the volume on the prefrontal cortex for a bit, exercise allows more free-flowing, uninhibited ideas to bubble up from other parts of the brain. It's like taking your inner critic and taskmaster off duty for a little while so your imagination can come out to play. This might be why so many creative luminaries throughout history have been avid exercisers. Tchaikovsky, Dickens, Beethoven, all took lengthy constitutionals to stoke their creative fires. Silicon Valley hotshots like Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey are known for their walking meetings, claiming they generate more aha moments than seated brainstorms. And let's not forget the countless writers like Murakami and Joyce Carol Oates, who swear by a long run to break through blocks and rejuvenate their prose. The list goes on. Of course, you don't have to be a creative genius to reap these benefits, whether you're designing a website, composing a song, shooting a film, or just appreciating art and music. Regular exercise will keep your creative faculties sharp and fertile. And the great thing is, there's no wrong way to do it. Dance, swim, play tennis, chase your kids around the park. As long as you're moving and elevating your heart rate, your imagination will soar. So next time you're feeling creatively stuck, stumped by a problem or just uninspired, don't stare at that blank page or empty canvas in despair. Put on your workout clothes and get moving instead. Chances are, by the time you get back, the ideas will be flowing fast and easy. That's just how the exercising brain rolls. Wow, we've covered a lot of fascinating ground. Let's do a quick recap of the key brain-boosting benefits of exercise discussed in Real Happy Pill. 1. Stress Resilience Exercise reshapes the brain to be less reactive to stress and more emotionally resilient overall. It's like armor against modern life's many pressures. 2. Laser focus. Getting your body moving regularly sharpens focus, sustains attention and helps you resist distractions. It's a secret weapon for productivity. 3. Mood magic. Physical activity is a powerful depression fighter and anxiety reliever. 
It floods the brain with feel-good chemicals and provides a sense of achievement and social connection. 4. Memory Maximizer Exercise causes the memory-forming hippocampus to increase in size and promotes the birth of new brain cells. It's like turning back the clock on age-related cognitive decline. 5. Creativity Catalyst Breaking a sweat gets the creative juices flowing by increasing blood flow to imagination hotspots in the brain and quieting the inner critic. It's a fast track to aha moments. Incredible, right? When you consider all these amazing brain benefits, it's really a no-brainer, pun intended, to make exercise a regular part of your routine. But Hansen doesn't just leave us with the why in his book. He also provides plenty of practical tips for how to maximize these cognitive rewards. Here are his top tips for optimizing exercise for brain health. Aim for 30 to 45 minutes per session. That seems to be the sweet spot for reaping maximum neurological benefit. Shoot for at least three sessions a week, but more is better when it comes to the brain. Consistency is key. Get your heart rate up. You don't have to go all out, but your pulse should quicken and you should break a sweat. Focus on aerobic cardio exercise for the most bang for your buck brain-wise, but resistance training has its place too, so mix it up. Find something you enjoy. You're much more likely to stick with an exercise plan if it's fun and matches your personality, lifestyle and fitness level. The best exercise for your brain is the one you'll actually do regularly. Squeeze in exercise when you can, where you can. Take the stairs, walk or bike to do errands, have walking meetings at work, dance while doing housework. It all adds up for your neurons. Don't overdo it. More isn't always better when it comes to exercise. Excessive punishing workouts can actually backfire and make you more stressed and run down. Moderation is key. Be patient. While a single exercise session provides an immediate brain boost, it takes a few weeks of regular workouts to start seeing lasting changes. Think of it like strength training for your mind. The results come with consistent practice over time. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to lace up my sneakers and get my brain in peak condition after all this. I hope this summary has inspired you to view exercise in a whole new light, not just as something you should do for your body, but as a powerful tool for optimizing your most vital organ.